and thank you so much for coming to hear about Drugs and Me. So we are a student harm reduction group and Guys. it is just me today but I'm going to introduce you to the rest of our wonderful team. Um, so actually very um, in the same way that Karine started Cosme Care, um, Ivan, Pablo and Gabriel were all from <coughs> Europe and studied in Spain and Switzerland before coming to the UK to do their masters. And people who have come from outside to look at a situation are really well placed to notice what's wrong with it. So they were really surprised when they came to the UK to notice the lack of harm reduction um, initiatives like um, drug testing, which um, in Europe Energy Control has been doing drug testing since 1998, um, and things like teaching how to look for the signs of an overdose. In Spain they have cannabis growers clubs, so they have a much more healthy relationship growing up with cannabis. Um, and they were really surprised, not just um, by the lack of knowledge which British students have about drugs, but by the enthusiasm with which we take them. Um, it's really, really um, surprising um, to think about this in the context of breaking convention, where after hearing all weekend from so many specialists, it feels like there's no glass ceiling to the intelligence with which you can approach drugs pharmacologically, psychologically, spiritually, philosophically, and as I hope to show with this talk, in terms of reducing their potential harms. Um, but the statistics that Drugs and Me um, are dealing with are the fact that the UK plays host to 38% of Europe's um, drug-related deaths and poisonings, excluding alcohol. Um, these cost the NHS 36 billion per year, and every week 55 people die from a drug-related death. Um, so we are working with a milestone of readily available drugs, but almost um, um, no readily available knowledge to someone that hasn't already decided to seek it out about what to take them. I spoke to a parent recently whose son had been given Daily Mail articles to read in school as his drugs education. That's what we're working with. Um, two people who came to our last workshop had two friends each who had died of missold drugs or drugs which they'd taken in the wrong dose. Um, that is a really horrifying statistic, but it is symptomatic of the prevalence of drugs, both legal and illegal, um, and especially um, prescription drugs taken without a prescription, which might um, be in your bloodstream and react with other drugs. Um, so what we have tried to do about this so far, we have done a survey of UCL students to work out what drugs people are taking and what drugs we most need to provide guides for on our site. Um, we've won some awards in order to be, um, which have enabled us to produce paraphernalia and to give out drug testing kits, which we do with SSDP, who we're very glad to have as partners. Um, we have um, a website up and running now um, with guides to cannabis, cocaine, alcohol, LSD, MDMA, um, and we'll shortly have guides to psilocybin and 2CB as well. Um, and we've partnered with the UCL Neurosciences to do some events and the pilot workshop, um, which we hope to do many more of, um, focusing on alcohol with UCL at the start of next year. Um, in the future, we also hope to work with the Loop to give out localised information about um, specific um, drugs which are going round in circulation, which are dangerous, um, and to develop a uni-wide network of reps to distribute our information. Um, so now I'd like to talk a bit about the survey. Um, what we have found out is that 40% uh, of people had tried a Class A drug in the last two years uh, when we surveyed 100 UCL students, 70% had tried a Class B, um, and 60% had never accessed any harm reduction in information. Of the remaining 40, most people thought that Talk to Frank should be the go-to resource for harm reduction. What's wrong with Talk to Frank? Well, it's essentially a glossary of drug terms, but it doesn't actually have any scientific information on it or practical information which could be helpful to you should you still choose to talk to, to take the drug. Um, so what we're trying to be, and there are some brilliant harm reduction websites out there, there's Blue Light, there's Aeroid, um, 
but they all occupy a place on this hinterland between the accessibility of Talk to Frank and the cold formality of a scientific paper. So what we're trying to do with Drugs and Me is to marry the two. Um, and so in, um, we're working in an environment where so many people do look up drug information and they don't find very simply and accessibly the information which will help them to stay safe. So, for example, Anyone's Child, which is a group of families that campaign for safer drug control, um, Martha Googled how to take MDMA before she died, and I went to a talk where her mother, Anne-Marie Cockburn, said if Martha's MDMA had come in packaging with instructions on, she'd still be alive today. So, in the absence of drugs that come in packaging, we are trying to be the instructions. Um, so, here are... Uh, is our current look for the site. We wanted it to look, and we have an amazing designer, Megan Lee, who tries to make it look very simple for students, by students. So um, the feel of the site should be like going for a drink with your mate before the night out, but your mate providing you with peer-reviewed information rather than going at you in the toilets and saying it's really good. Um, <laughs> and um, we have features like an interactions checker, um, oh, no, this um, is not what was meant to happen. We seem to have gone onto the website, sorry. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you our interactions checker by going to it on the site. So we've got alcohol here, um, and if we cross it with cocaine, then we can see um, that alcohol and cocaine are unsafe together. We've, uh, we've done it so you can check two drugs together at the moment. We believe that because most drug use is poly and most people already have one drug in their system, when they take another, be that prescription medication, painkillers or alcohol, then it's really important to at least be able to check a few of the drugs that you know you've taken. We have taken our inspiration for this feature from Tripsit, which is a brilliant site that um, has an interactions checker where you can check many drugs in combination but we felt that that was a bit daunting for people that are coming to our site to access harm reduction information for the first time. So this is a simplified version, but with combinations which we have researched um, to a point where we feel confident in, in giving you the information. Um, Yes, so coming soon to our site, we'll have TCB, psilocybin, and modafinil. Modafinil is a nootropic, which is a performance-enhancing work drug. Most people, it can be prescribed for people with ADHD, but most people take it without a prescription. If you take it without a prescription, it won't come with the really important instruction that it can give you a JP tummy and interfere with the birth control pill. So these are the kind of instructions which, in our guides, we will be providing to augment the fact that people are taking these drugs without instructions. If we move on to 2CB, this is a really important one as well that we're providing because at Park Life Festival, um, a lot of MDMA was missold as 2CB, obviously a very different drug. If you look at the 2CB, you can see it has this much more cocaine-like texture, whereas the MDMA is more crystally. But of course, the best way to notice that straight away is to be someone who takes MDMA, who is habituated to making bombs, and who, and who has looked at MDMA and spent enough time with MDMA that, of course, as soon as you see, see the TCB, you notice that it is not what you're used to. Um, it is a shame that we live in this social microclimate where people tacitly take drugs but don't talk about them overtly because what we're hoping to do with Drugs and Me is to move towards a society where people do talk about the visual differences between drugs even if they're not necessarily inclined to take them to the extent that someone might for the first time buy MDMA and not necessarily have tried it before but know what it is supposed to look like and what it is supposed to do before they start dripping. Um, but as well as providing these very practical tips, we have um, a wonderful set of academics who have helped us to make sure that the information on our site is correct. We're really indebted to David Nutt for continued advice at how we frame Drugs in Me, both within UCL and presenting it to the wider world. Um, to Valerie Curran for hosting an event on cannabis with us um, with the UCL Neuroscience Society, and Professor Lawrence Phillips, who is going to provide us um, in the coming months with an updated version of the scale of harms so that people can see, especially alcohol situated in the context alongside the illegal drugs um, 
when they're making their decisions about what to take. Um, due to David Nutt being so wonderfully helpful to us in reframing ourselves, we have reached a point where we are now on the UCL Union website as a resource. Um, this is an enormous amount of progress and it has taken our first survey um, an enormous amount of data collection of quotes from people before we have got to the point where they have acknowledged that drugs are being taken um, not on the scale that they're being taken on or that we've proved they're being taken on through the survey, but enough to include us as a harm reduction resource and to acknowledge the need for us to, um, to be there. Um, so we've, in, uh, we've been thinking about how to reframe ourselves, to establish ourselves in an establishment that denies the reality we document. Um, and there are some certain things that we've gravitated towards as ideas, one of which is to make sure that everybody remains our target audience um, rather than suiting a specific group. Um, and I know there's a massive dichotomy, um, especially with the presentation of psychedelic science, with whether you dress it up in a suit and tie or whether you, uh, you acknowledge the psychedelic culture that it comes from. And we have been uh, very determined never to bow to a particular, a particular set um, or a particular look in terms of how we present ourselves, because we think that information should be accessible to anyone, whatever their research skills, and it should always be scientific scientifically accurate. So we'll, another thing that we've agreed is that we'll never com um, compromise on the accuracy. But we might occasionally change the wording in order to bypass people who are freaked out by, say, the mention of drugs. Um, and so one step in the right direction is that UCL has agreed to support us in providing alcohol education um, Freshers Week. And we see this as an amazing acknowledgement that alcohol is a drug. So as we move towards a future where universities become slightly more accepting of the drug culture as it exists. We want to continue to provide information that could save lives. And thank you so much for coming here today. <laughs>
um, and he has several schools that he's built a relationship with where he can go in and he can teach them uh, not in a drugs positive way but in an unbiased way about drugs um, and what he majors on and what we're hoping to do when we take our workshops to schools is critical thinking skills and how to evaluate a source as opposed to necessarily everything in the workshop being about drugs because you can't really argue with the idea that everyone should be able to talk to uh, everyone should be taught to think critically everyone should be able to evaluate scientific information um, and so it becomes much more about this life skill which is the the discipline of being able to think has that just been made up by a civil servant who's never tried any drugs or is that a scientist um, and that's um, that can be removed from the drugs as necessary in order to bypass the the draconian people that are standing between you and educating the kids uh, well, yes, and this has been actually horrifically unsuccessful so far. We've um, had 20 schools that have not um, wanted us to come in, um, and uh, that's something that we're working on. We've had a lot more success with the university, and I think partly I attribute that to the fact that um, we're all quite fresh from university or still at university ourselves, so we have a lot more of an understanding of how to talk to university um, to university um, powers that be about what we want to do. Um, and I think there's a lot more acceptance there as well that people are taking drugs, which is when you go down to school level, you've got parents, you've got um, parent-teacher associations, and it's, it's much more difficult, but I think can be done, but working on a very individual level, and of course working with these people that are providing Daily Mail articles as facts. Hey. Hi, I work for a drug and alcohol service, and I know that our young person service uh, do quite a lot of targeted work in schools and crews and things like that. Would you be interested in potentially working alongside a treatment service or does that kind of thing? To uh, look, we area? would be extremely interested in doing that, yes. Um, so one of our plans that we um, haven't developed at all yet is to develop an app where people outside of um, the student community can use it to kind of monitor their drug, their drug use and learn about... Um, learn about whether they necessarily need to take more drugs um, and kind of just develop a more mindful relationship with substances. And so, yeah, we'd definitely, definitely be really interested in learning from you guys and working together, even outside, even outside of the student community. But we, this is, like, where our roots are. <laughs> hey. Um, I have yeah, I'm wondering whether you have a section about how to reduce harm the setting where somebody's already in a having a negative experience or you know, if there has been a contraindication. Um Well, so with every drug on our site and if I can make the PowerPoint behave I will try and go to one. Um, with every drug on our site, we um, we have um, the shape of the drug from taking it to being on it to coming down. And so within that, we, um, we cover kind of what to do if you're having a challenging experience, things that might be challenging, like if you're on MDMA, to look out for the signs of heat stroke, which is actually the number one killer when you're on MDMA. And things like that, like we kind of cover everything that could go wrong within each guide, um, and that each guide ends with an aftercare section, which is um, especially the cocaine one, things like you might be feeling anxious till next Tuesday. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of information about kind of how to care for yourself and your friends built into each guide. Um, and a lot of it is from sites like Arrowhead um, and um, all of the wonderful harm reduction um, things that exist. Um, Hey. So, have you considered in involving uh, the plant medicines, which are generally considered, you know, a lot of the good things that people seek in in drugs that are harmful, but actually that get a lot of, you get a lot of benefit from the plant medicines, like ayahuasca and ayahuasca and so on. Um, well, we do have um, someone who wants to write a guide to DMT for us. Um, I think our, um, so far all of the guides that we've had have been with people that are really confident that they can produce the best scientific information put together in the best way. Um, and that hasn't been something that we've necessarily um, that we've necessarily felt about many of the plant medicines yet, which is why we've got psilocybin coming because we now feel confident that we can offer it um, 
in uh, as up to the standard as the rest of our guides and we hope that the DMT one will get there and when it does it will come out but that's um, that's why we focused on the ones we have is because we feel the most confident about um, them being up to the to the educative standard that we want them to be um, but we we should eventually expand to include all plant medicines and if anyone wants to write a plant medicine guide for us then that would be um, amazing hey. I think you mentioned something about including um, like prescription medications, antidepressants and stuff in your drug calculator danger thing. Is that something you guys might be able to do? And is there any evidence for it that you're aware of? Like, you know, so if you're taking serot like sertraline or an antidepressant like an SSRI, then you're going to have a different experience on MDMA than someone who's not taking medication. Like oh, that. yes, of course. So, um, especially with things like sertraline, which um, inhibit how much um, serotonin or no, you, where they give you all your serotonin, there's definitely an interaction with MDMA, which enough has been written about that we feel comfortable including confident including that on our guide. Um, things like alcohol and Valium both being downers, there's been enough written on that that we feel confident kind of saying that they're a bad combination. But yeah, we've, we only do have combinations where we feel that there's enough scientific evidence or medical literature to back it up. What about including uh, personal experiences on that said substance on the website? So if people want to see like, like how other people went through the experience, so you have their a personal account. Well, we feel like Aramid and Blue Light are wonderful for what they are and they do that very, very well. And I think that was one of the um, defining things when we made Drugs and Me that we really wanted to do was to make sure that um, it was presented very accessibly and simply, but it was all hard science um, that would um, that was just kind of objectively telling you what the drug, drug does and how to look after yourself. Um, and one of the things that we really felt when we were looking at Arrowhead and Blue Light when we made this project um, was that it's very easy to be looking for the hard science and the facts and then get bogged down in someone's bad acid trip from 2013 um, and then be put off taking acid when actually you might have had a wonderful time if you just found out a description of how it works and some advice about the best set and setting to do it in. So I think there's definitely there's so much room to read people's trip reports and that's like a really valuable, incredible thing um, that these resources exist. But um, with Drugs and Me, we, um, we very much wanted to just stick to here's the hard science of what the effects are and here's how to kind of have the best time. Um, thank you so much. Um,